Now this, I think, is something that a lot of people are going to be very interested in. Because mm. this is, I would say, probably, from my point of view, the biggest gap between a really good golfer and an amateur, but also probably the biggest misunderstanding. Because yeah. actually bunker shots, they're not that difficult, as long as you get the technique right. I'm saying that with such confidence, and I feel I'm quite a confident bunker player. Yeah. But I'm also very aware that I'm probably just going to get absolutely ripped apart now. I don't think so. I think uh, it's kind of like cycling a little bit. When you kind of get a hold of it, yeah. you're never going to struggle to get it out. Yeah, then yeah. it's just about like perfecting it, right? Hit it really close. Yeah. Really good players from bunkers with good lies hit it really close. Yeah. They're just really good. Uh, and that's because the difficult thing is that this is the only shot in golf where we're not trying to hit a ball. Yeah, exactly. And it, the like the mindset of I'm actually not trying to hit the ball is what messes a lot of people up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the biggest key in bunker, similar to other shots, is still being able to control kind of where that club head enters the sand and how deep you swing underneath the golf ball. Absolutely. Okay, so the issue you see from a lot of amateurs is that a 60 there. Yeah, 58. If you said, yeah, is that they know they need to like swing underneath the golf ball, but they get way too steep and that you swing right underneath it. Luckily, that kind of popped up still, mm -hmm. but they leave a lot of shots short, effectively because the club is moving too much underneath the golf ball. Absolutely, yeah. So what can we do to avoid the club to go too deep, right? One big thing is to use the bounce, right? If we use the leading edge, it's like a shovel. That thing is just gonna dig straight underneath the golf ball, right? Mm -hmm. But if we're able to expose and use the bounce, that club can't really go deep underneath the ball, right? So we gotta make sure we use the bounce. So in the setup, we have to really make adjustments to allow ourselves to use the bounce. So what do we do? First of all, we move the ball way up in the stands and we open up the club face a lot at setup. Okay. The more you open up the club face, the more you expose the back part, the bounce of the club. Then in the backswing, we actually try to open it up even more. Mm -hmm. If you look at really good wedge players at the top or bunk players at the top, that club face is facing them, right? So a really good drill you can do, you put a little sand on that club head and you try to throw that sand over the shoulder. Love that. Right, that's a great Love drill. That. You've seen that before. But if you don't open up the club face, you see that sand is gonna fall off from the front part of the club every time. So we want to really open up the club face and then from here, it's similar to the high shot that we hit, we have to make sure we don't have any shaft lean. If we have shaft lean, once again, we're not gonna be able to use the bounce, right? You can see that leading edge is gonna dig. So we gotta make sure that the hands are effectively almost behind the ball at impact to once again being able to use the bounce. Love that. Open up the club face, release the club a lot to avoid the club to dig too much underneath the golf ball, right? Then that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is to make sure that the club enters the sand at the same spot every mm -hmm. time. So the good thing about the bunker shot is that we don't really need to generate too much speed if we have enough bounce exposed. Right, okay. Some people think I have to hit it so freaking yeah, hard yeah. at the bunker, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's because the club goes too far underneath the golf ball so that it, there's no energy in the ball, right? So if we're not too steep underneath, we don't have to swing too hard, which makes it easier to kind of control the body and making sure that we don't move too much right or left because that will make it difficult to control where that club head enters the sand. Love it. Okay, so we want the head to be kind of steady over where we want to kind of enter the club and we want to keep the head there throughout the whole motion to be able to control where the club enters the sand. Fantastic. Okay, let's give it a go here. Absolutely brilliant. Go, I, love, I love that drill of throwing it over your shoulder. Yeah. That, that's, I think, one of the most difficult things, actually feeling like it's more yeah, open coming through. Absolutely. And if you do that drill, you will get the feel. Uh, ball okay. position, like front of center? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Almost definitely further forward because effectively we're not trying to bottom out the club there, right? We're trying, we're trying to, get trying to bottom it out behind it. Yeah. Absolutely. So we make so imagine if this is where we want to enter, we want the head kind of to be above that spot, right? Okay. So for you, you have to lean a little bit more left. There you go. Love that. Open up the club face. Expose the bounce and keep the head in the same spot and release it. World class. 
so World good. Class. That is so good, that, mate. How good is that? I love that. Yeah. That is such a nice feeling. Oh, the feeling of whipping that through. So, a good, and you're very good at this, but in the beginning, what I do with most of my amateurs is that I put a line in the sand, yeah? I tell them to put a little sand on the club face, and I say, throw it over the shoulder, and then bottom out, just past that line. That was too much. That was not very good. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to do it again, right? That's why it's a good drill. Put a sand on it, throw it over the shoulder, and bottom out just left of it. Still a little bit too far forward. But if you literally, without hitting a golf ball, do this drill a couple of times, you're gonna groove the exact technique that will help you become a better bunker player. Okay, give me a good one here, Pete. Yeah. Throw the sand over your shoulder, hit that line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Beautiful. So a little bit forward too. I'd have had a, I'd have had a lot of spin if I'd have caught that yeah. just right, crikey. <laughs> It's just that, that feeling of, yeah. I think the feeling of that is the strangeness, is how open, Yeah. just how open like that actually makes the club. And people are gonna be scared because it's so extreme. But literally you can feel like, so it's, it's some set of the wrist this way, and then it's a lot of roll. Yeah. So if you see my forearm, how it rolls, almost like as much as you can possibly do, that's kind of the feel you need. You need to roll and set. Amazing. Yeah. Some great feelings, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Really cool. Right, roll and set. Roll and set. And then keep the head nice and still, club it past the hands. Yep. Nip that. Oh, that's a lot of spin. That's actually pretty good. So that's basically just a little bit too close to the ball. A little bit. One thing that I also noticed a lot of players do, especially the ones that struggle with kind of getting too much underneath the golf ball, they tend to, you know, the old saying, feet should be pointing left, left yeah, yeah. face right. If you look at really good wedge player nowadays, they set up a lot more square to almost shut, okay? Because if you have a path that's going too much out to in, you're gonna tend to get too steep, you're not gonna be able to release the handle as much, and the club is gonna dig too much underneath the ball. So focus on where you're actually sending that sand. If you have those tendencies, you see the sand is going left of the pin, right? Yeah. So try to shoot that sand straight towards the pin. That's gonna automatically shallow out the motion. Ooh. Okay, so do the same thing now, but try to really shoot that sand with those other fields straight towards the pin. Okay. Nice. If you honestly ask yourself, how many hours last year did you spend practicing bunker shots? Oh, like zero. No one does, right? Yeah, Everyone hits balls, hits a little putts, and then they're Oh, bunkers, why would I even practice that? Like if you spend 20 minutes in the bunkers, you're just kind of doing what we talked about. The line in the sand, feeling that you're throwing that sand over, you're gonna become so, so good. When I was younger, a friend of mine told me that KJ Choi used to spend a full day in the bunker just to get good at it. So he literally once a month, he would just spend a whole day in the bunker. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe KJ, you can comment to see what he says. But, but literally, <laughs> when I was in Spain before I came to uni over here, we would be like, okay, one day a month, we just hit bunk shots all day. Mm. And it was incredible how good we got. Oh. So like, if you're a really serious golfer, give that a go. Like, you spend a full day in the bunker, and I promise you, for weeks after that, you're gonna be so confident. But the issue is that no one practice it. No, no. And it doesn't matter how good your fundamentals are if you still need to freshen up on them now and then. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Show us, show us how okay. it's done, mate. Ball up, open up the club face, release it, and almost feel like I'm shooting that sand straight towards the pin. Beautiful strike. Okay, my low right, but good distance. And you see it's not too deep there. I'm not oh, hitting no. it too hard, am I? Just letting that club kind of fall and if you expose the bounce the right way, it's not too difficult. Beauty peak. Spun too much, otherwise it's going in. Ah, there it is. So nice. That's how you hit bunker shots. Yeah, yeah that's how you do. Easier, one easy game. 